Well, 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 it's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for uh, a laryngitis-style edition of 5.45 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, and I'll be taking you through uh, a, a husky 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. Uh, but we've got uh, plenty of footage to speak for me, uh, lest I lose my voice entirely. We'll talk about the 10th annual Collegiate Acapella. It's got everybody excited, including me. Lots to talk about with the BUHS board. We'll cover all that and a uh, somewhat heartbreaking but fantastic sports rundown that includes plenty of BUHS basketball. We'll also talk about last night's uh, fire on Greenleaf Street here in Brattleboro. Uh, Senator Patrick Leahy's quest uh, to find out uh, more for the Senate uh, um, on gun laws and uh, plenty more. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this February 5th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, and despite uh, a little case of laryngitis, I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes. Uh, well, then we'll head into the uh, news, and hopefully 15 minutes after that, you can tune in to the Brattleboro Select Board. That's live, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Uh, you're looking there at some footage uh, from the uh, Brattleboro Area Middle School BAMS uh, bullying project uh, headed up by... Uh, 545 Live Content Specialist and longtime BCTV producer Frederick Noyce working with students there to, to create a piece about bullying. It'll show in its entirety on BCTV next week. Uh, and uh, you can see it on their YouTube channel and our video on demand as well. Uh, a very cool piece on a, a very uh, current, relevant, serious topic here. So, all right, uh, with that, uh, we'll move on and jump into the stories here, which means jumping uh, on into the newsroom. Let's see if we can uh, start there and uh, talk a little bit about acapella. Nine of its ten years have seen a sellout crowd in Brattleboro. As of every February, uh, an acapella, a group of acapella troops from area colleges gather at the Latches to showcase their arrange arrangements, giving uh, classic songs and pop hits alike the vocal exclusive treatment. Last year, BCTV's video uh, held the record for most online views out of all of our local programming. And this year, after doubling the camera angles uh, and crew, it promises to be another hit. We've got uh, an exclusive sneak peek that I uh, want to take a look at here. So let's see if we can uh, get it uh, up on the screen, look at a few of the uh, groups tied us over until next week. We can get this full video up online and on our channel. Let's take a look. There's no escaping the draws of the end of this town. It's great to have you here for Brattleboro's 10th annual collegiate acapella concert. I think this is bigger than the Super Bowl in Brattleboro. <laughs> Just a, uh, a sample of the 10th annual Collegiate Acapella. We'll show that in its full glory and uh, put it up on our uh, YouTube channel and video on demand at brittlebrotv.org. Uh, by the end of this week, should be uh, a lot of fun to take a look at. All right, back to the newsroom we go, uh, and we'll talk... Uh, wouldn't uh, would be remiss of us, perhaps, uh, still not to talk about the, uh, the school scare. Uh, we've, we've dubbed it. But uh, there's, there's more information, and uh, we'll launch right into it. School routines remain the same for area students, but a nonspecific threat towards school-aged children that prompted an increased police presence around the schools uh, in the area still lingers over the community. With no open investigation for the police to pursue, it uh, remains a concern for uh, parents and educators alike. Now, at last night's Brattleboro Union High School uh, School Board meeting, the board again uh, reiterated the sensitive nature of the case uh, as it regards confidentiality. Moving forward,
forward and they noted that at the board's next meeting a series of current policies will be reapproved or are up for debate to be reapproved which should include debate over a sentence in the school's crisis prevention response policy uh, including uh, the the sentence that states that law enforcement personnel have the right to question students without notifying the parent or parent or guardian if uh, the questioning involved is in direct regard to possible criminal activity by the parent or guardian. They uh, adopted this policy or uh, the, the policy adopted the sentence really in 2009 on the recommendation of local police departments uh, well, in lieu of a more restrictive policy that would have allowed school personnel to decline a police request for interrogation of a student without parental consent. And while the board's legal counsel recommendation to the school board Let's put up our policy topic here. Um, well, the uh, board's legal counsel recommended to the, to the school board that they keep the policy. It will no longer be posted on the school's website as such, something the board's Ian Torrey shed light on while reading uh, from the VSBA's official response uh, to the, uh, the school board's inquiry about the best course of action uh, going forward with this policy in light of recent events. Let's take a look. The rationale for no longer posting this policy is that it basically attempted to summarize the state of the law on this end subject, and the law itself is in constant flux as courts review specific fact situations and render opinions as to their legality. So you can catch uh, that full BUHS school board meeting. It'll go up tomorrow on BCTV's video on demand at brettlebrewtv.org. All right, uh, we're going to uh, wrap up a few things here before heading down to the second floor meeting room uh, to get some three camera coverage of the Brattlebro Select Board meeting, uh, which will happen uh, live. Two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, but a few more clips to launch into as time ticks down. Uh, we'll go uh, back into our BUHS stories as the board talks about updating its policy on emergency response. Uh, we spoke with Superintendent of Schools, uh, WNESU Superintendent of uh, Schools, or really the Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union, Ron Staley, uh, who says that uh, one week later, after this uh, safety scare, he hopes that parents can begin to relax. We respect parents' decisions that um, they want to keep their kids home if, if they feel like uh, they need to. But I think, in, in general, the schools are back to a, a normal operation, again, with um, with precautions and uh, being uh, vigilant and uh, working with law enforcement uh, as we have been. You can uh, find that full interview on our video on demand at uh, brettlebrotv.org. All right, a few stories to wrap up here. Back into the newsroom we go uh, as we'll uh, talk about uh, the Works Bakery in downtown Brattleboro. Slide over here a little bit. There we go. It's not every day that the feds get involved in Brattleboro, but uh, they've kicked in with state authorities in an investigation of what's being dubbed a data breach at the Works Bakery in downtown Brattleboro. Uh, that's likely to, uh, it's likely a direct link to several cases of credit card and identity theft. In a press release released last Friday, uh, Works President Richard French stated, quote, while it appears that the Works Bakery and some of uh, our customers may have been victimized by criminal activity, we have done everything possible to limit the damage and end the threat immediately. Authorities are urging anyone who's used a uh, credit or debit card recently at the works to contact their finance, financial institution uh, and alert them of the threat. Uh, if we, if and when we know more about that, we'll be sure to let you know. All right, uh, we're getting ready to wrap up a full lid on our live broadcast as we get ready to uh, head on down and cover this select board meeting. But we do have a few more clips to cover, so uh, if you're interested in following up, you can uh, join me on our Facebook page, official Facebook page, where later tonight I'll post uh, this full 545 live broadcast, uh, which will include uh, several other clips, including the, uh, the fire on Greenleaf Street we were talking about, and our sports roundup, as well as checking in with uh, Senator Patrick Leahy, uh, something uh, I'm uh, particularly interested to do as he talks about gun violence. But for all you live viewers out there who've been so patient with me and my uh, waning voice, thanks for checking in with us. Remember, we'll be back Friday and uh, we'll be back live on the air in just 15 minutes. Uh, two clicks up the dial on Channel 10. Night, everybody. Thanks for checking in. All right, uh, well, internet viewers, uh, now that we've gotten rid of those folks watching live on TV, let's uh, continue the stories here with this internet exclusive. Speaking of uh, the internet, uh, we're going to jump in here to our, uh, our uh, web view. 
uh, where we can uh, glean some footage. This is courtesy of my uh, often co-captain Joe Bushy's uh, official YouTube channel, Brattleboro News, uh, where he gathered some information for us uh, on a fire at uh, Greenleaf, 204 Greenleaf Street last night. Let's uh, load up his YouTube video here. Uh, the fire destroyed a first floor apartment at 204 Greenleaf Street in Brattleboro. Uh, that was late Monday evening. Uh, Brattleboro Fire Chief Mike Bacassi says an open flame was left un unattended, but he credits the use of smoke detectors for getting everyone uh, out safely. All the occupants, with the exception of one apartment, were able to return to their units within hours. The fire was under control in half an hour. So, uh, so you're looking at footage uh, fresh off of uh, Brattleboro News, all in word, the YouTube channel uh, of my uh, good friend and often uh, co-host here, Joe Bushy, where you can find uh, more exclusive clips uh, from the, all the latest happenings in town. All right, uh, let's keep it uh, moving here and take a look at uh, a few clips uh, from Senator Patrick Leahy, courtesy of his own YouTube channel. Uh, Senator Patrick Leahy, all one word. I know that's uh, a, a surprise of a uh, YouTube channel name. But uh, his, uh, he's been tasked with uh, investigating uh, current federal uh, gun laws, a hot topic, as, uh, as everybody now knows. Uh, he says uh, the main focus uh, is to make sure that, not that criminals are buying guns, but that uh, People aren't buying guns for criminals by proxy. Let's take a look. Well, I found in my experience that many criminals are able to get guns illegally because they use straw purchases. In other words, a person who has no criminal record can easily pass background check, goes in, buys the guns, then turns around and gives them to criminals. But there's, <clears throat> there's no federal law that uh, makes it illegal to I just have one more thing. as a straw purchaser of, of firearms. All right, uh, just to wrap up, a quick uh, little bit of shameless promotion for what's coming up on BCTV, and for that we'll head into our fancy new on BCTV feature, and then i got to get out of here and uh, head down to set up for that select board meeting. But we've got a new series called Pets and uh, a pilot episode about animal Most photography. Most shots that I see of animals, people take them from standing above them and shooting down. Right. You kind of get the Hershey Kiss effect uh -huh. where you have a little tiny head and a big body. <laughs> That's from uh, producer Debbie Jacobs and catch the Act 250 hearing on the proposed Dummerston gravel pit. Should shed some light on that project. We'll uh, take a look. The gravel pit machines that will cause the loudest noise, crushing, or sorry, crushing, screening, drilling, can have aftermarket products added to them to further mitigate noise if needed. That's uh, tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. on BCTV Channel 10. All right, I got to get out of here. I'll quickly thank everybody that makes 545 Lab tick the way it does, including our content specialists, Frederick Noyes and Ian Keel. Uh, Frederick gathered not only that BAMS video footage, uh, but also was at the helm of the 10th Annual Acapella Concert coverage. Uh, I'll be back Friday, uh, hopefully with a little bit more voice for you to enjoy. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Night, everybody.